What we're going to do now is we're going to practice predicting missing components of chemical reactions and chemical equations. So here I have a sodium phosphate reacting with something, I don't know what, and it's going to produce sodium hydroxide and potassium phosphate. So the very first thing that I'm going to do with step one is I'm going to be identifying what elements are present or what polyatomic ions are present. So right now I see sodium. I'm gonna actually look on the completed side, so I'm gonna be looking over here on the right-hand side, my products. I see the polyatomic ion hydroxide. I see potassium. And I see the polyatomic ion phosphate. Now that I have all of those components identified, I can go ahead and identify the type of reaction. Now I look like I have a compound added to something to produce two compounds. This is going to be a little bit tricky, but if I look, I see sodium was bonded with phosphate, but then it ends up being bonded with hydroxide. And phosphate was bonded with sodium, but now it's bonded with potassium. This looks like I have switched partners. So this is going to be a double replacement reaction. And I can go ahead and move on to step three. So since this is a double replacement, I know that I am missing a compound. And I am going to be missing the compound that was originally bonded between my uh, switched partners. So sodium's new partner is going to be one of my components and uh, phosphate's new partner will be another one. So I know that potassium and hydroxide bonded is what I am missing here. And for step four, I can go ahead and figure out what that compound is gonna look like. So I know I'm gonna have potassium and I need to figure out what potassium's charge is gonna be. Potassium being in column one means it's going to have a positive one charge. And hydroxide being a polyatomic ion, I can look inside of the periodic table and I can find hydroxide. Hydroxide is going to have a charge of negative one. And that means that I can go ahead and bring them together. And when I exchange charges for a subscript, I'm just going to leave them as is. So KOH is my final compound. And I can go ahead and just add it to my equation. And then I can balance my chemical equation. So I have sodium, I have phosphate, I have potassium, and I have hydroxide as my things I need to balance. Sodium left count is three, sodium right count is one. Potassium left count is one, potassium right count is one. Potassium, or I'm sorry, phosphates left count is one, phosphates right count is one. Potassium's left count is one, potassium's right count is three. Hydroxide's left count is one, hydroxide's right count is one. So as I can see, I have both of my metals are messed up. Minho says I'm gonna deal with this first. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and try to fix sodium first, which means on the right-hand side where sodium is, I'll add a three coefficient, and I will adjust my count for both sodium and hydroxide since this coefficient will affect both. And then I will deal with potassium because hydroxide is less important than potassium. And I have one, but I want three, so I will add a three coefficient in front of potassium, and I will update my counts, and that will cause everything to be balanced. So I am done with my uh, problem here. My next problem I'm going to be dealing with, I have silver nitrate being added to copper, forming copper to nitrate and something. So step one, I'm gonna identify what is present. I have silver, I have the polyatomic ion nitrate, and I have copper. And in step two, I'm going to go ahead and identify what type of reaction this is. So I have a compound being added to a single element, 
producing a compound and something else. So what this looks like to me is a single replacement reaction. Which means in step three, when I'm identifying what I'm missing, what I need here, I need to figure out what was replaced. And so silver was bonded with nitrate, but now copper is bonded with nitrate, which means copper replaced silver. So that means I just am going to have a silver metal and I don't have a new anion to uh, bond with. So all I have to do is just kind of replace that silver metal. So step four is gonna be easy since silver is just by itself. I'm just gonna go ahead and identify it as just silver. And for step five, I will go ahead and just add it into here and then balance the reaction. So as I make my list, I will have silver, I will have nitrate, and I will have copper. And then I can go ahead and count. Silver left is one, silver right is one. Nitrate left is one, nitrate right is two. Copper left is one, copper right is one. So both of my metals are balanced. It's only my nitrate that I'm having an issue with, which means I'm gonna go ahead and fix it here. So I have one, but I want two, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a two coefficient there. That will balance my nitrate, and as I recount, I realize it messes up my silver. So now my silver needs to be rebalanced. I have one, but I want two, so I'll add a two coefficient in front of silver, and that will balance out my reaction, and I am done. Okay, so this next problem, I have a, a CH4, H10 being added to oxygen going to something. So for step one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna identify all of the elements that are present and that is going to be carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Anytime that you see CHO, be suspicious. This might be a combustion reaction. As I go on to step two, I'm gonna look further in and see if this is actually what I suspect it might be based off of Cho. So I have a hydrocarbon. I have carbon bonded with hydrogen plus oxygen going to two products. This does look like it is going to be a combustion reaction, which means that step three is going to be pretty easy for me since combustion reactions are always going to produce the same products, I can go ahead and say that for step three, I'm going to need uh, carbon dioxide and water or dihydrogen monoxide. Then for step four, when I actually go ahead and create those compounds, I know carbon dioxide, carbon doesn't have a prefix, so it doesn't have a subscript. Di means two, oxide is oxygen, so CO2. And then I am going to have dihydrogen monoxide. Di means two, so two hydrogens. Mono means one, oxide is oxygen. So I'm going to have CO2 and H2O. For step five, I can go ahead and just add those into the actual equation and start my balance. So I have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. I wrote those really close together. Hopefully I can manage with that. And I'm gonna go ahead and start counting. So carbon left is four, carbon right is one, hydrogen left is 10, hydrogen right is two, Oxygen left is two, oxygen right is three. Remember, since I have two oxygens here and one here, I'm gonna add those together. And then I can go ahead and start balancing. Minho says I'm gonna deal with carbon first, and so I have one I want four, so I'm gonna go ahead and add a four coefficient there, and then recount. This will change my oxygen count to eight here, plus one, so nine on the right. Minho says hydrogen before oxygen, so I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can balance that out. So I have two, but I want 10, so I'm gonna go ahead and multiply that. That gets me to a five coefficient there and brings my hydrogen count up to 10, and my oxygen count up to eight from here, five from here, so eight plus five. That gives me 13, and now the only person that's messed up is oxygen. 
But then I start noticing something. On the left hand side, I have an oxygen count of two and on the right, I have an odd number. This is a problem because I can't multiply two by anything to get an odd number with whole integers. So I have run into a wall. I need to somehow force this right hand side to be even so that I can reach it with my oxygen. But I don't wanna mess up my counts for carbon and hydrogen. So what I'm gonna to do to force it to be even is I'm going to multiply all of my coefficients by the lowest even number, and that is going to be two. I'm gonna multiply my carbon, uh, my hydrocarbon here, and my carbon dioxide and water by two to keep the same number on the left and the right side. So eight and eight, 20 and 20. And then I'll adjust my oxygen count to my new doubled answer. So I have eight times two, which is 16 plus 10. That gives me 26 oxygens on the right hand side. And since I doubled this while also doubling this, my counts for carbon and hydrogen are the same still, or they're even on both sides, I should say which leaves me free to go ahead and predict what my uh, coefficient is going to be here for oxygen. So I have two, but I want 26. So two times what is 26? Oh, I know, 13. So then I can go ahead and do that and that will get me to balance. Combustion reactions are particularly annoying to balance. Just kind of be prepared to just keep trying at them. Uh, doubling the whole thing is a totally valid option and you kind of have to do it rather often, so get used to it. And then these large coefficients are totally normal and okay as well. So my uh, next problem that I'm gonna try to predict my missing pieces of is going to be K plus something goes to KCl. So, for step one, I'm gonna look at the side that actually has everybody present, so that is gonna be my product side. And I see that I have potassium and I have chlorine. For step two, I'm gonna to try to identify what type of reaction it is. So I have potassium plus something goes to one single product. This looks like a synthesis reaction to me which means that I need, for step three, I need chlorine by itself. And so with uh, step four, I'm gonna go ahead and figure out what chlorine will look like. Now chlorine is a part of Brinkelhoff, which are our diatomic elements. So that means that chlorine, if it's just by itself and it's not bonded with anything, will take the form of Cl2. So as I add that to my uh, equation here, I'm gonna make sure that I have that two there. That will be very important to make sure that everything balances out. And then I can go ahead and proceed to step five where I balance out everything. I only have potassium and chlorine, and then I can go ahead and start counting. Potassium left is one, potassium right is one, chlorine left is two, chlorine right is one. And so the only person messed up is chlorine, so I can go ahead and multiply this compound by two to get my, co uh, my count for chlorine on the right-hand side up. And that changes my potassium count on the right to two. So now chlorine's good, but potassium is not. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back, and I'm going to multiply one by two to get me up to the same number of uh, potassiums on both sides of that 